Can you beat Scarlet and Violet with only a Fue Coco? Why Fue Coco? I mean, look at that face. That is an adorable Pokemon. But will it be strong enough to beat a game that I was told is one of the toughest Game Freak has ever made? Well, there's only one way to find out. Now, if you've watched my channel before, this isn't the first time I've done one of these solo runs, but this is the first time I've done one on a game that has just come out with zero information. Usually I talk about Fue Coco's stats. I don't know them. It's move pool. I don't know it. What TMs it learns. I don't even know what TMs are in the game. I had to do this with zero information. And if I could still win, I think that bodes well for Fue Coco. Now, for those of you who haven't paid much attention to the news, Scarlet and Violet don't work the exact same way as other Pokemon games do. They are, in fact, open world, meaning you can do any of the 18 events. Yes, there are 18 of them in whatever order you like, give or take. There's some exceptions here. Eight of these events are gym battles, the same type we know and love from previous Pokemon games. In this game, the villain team is named Team Star, and they are located in five compounds. Each of those compounds has a leader that specializes in one of the five types that the gym leaders don't. And there are five Titan Pokemon roaming around. We need to defeat all these in order to complete the game. And as there are 18 events and 18 types, we have to face something of every single type, which is pretty good. Now, luckily for Fue Coco, the first gym battle, the only time the game actually tells you what to do, is a bug type gym. And Bug is an exceptional matchup since we both resist its moves and our moves are super effective. So how did the battle go? So gym leader Katie sends out Nimble, which I believe is Bug fighting. It's not going to really matter. And we're going to Terastalize. What the heck is that? So meet the new Dynamax, Terastalization. This is an interesting mechanic that we're going to use throughout the game. And in terms of how exactly it works, I still don't know. What I do know is it does two things for sure. The first is potentially change your Pokemon's type, but most Pokemon's Terra type is just the type they already are, so Fue Coco's is fire by default. So why bother? Because it also boosts moves of that type. Based on my experiences, I think it's an additional 50%, but don't quote me on that, I don't have the exact numbers. It doesn't increase our speed though, so Nimble is able to use Double Kick. Thankfully, it only does 10 damage, and we use Ember. You might wonder why I have animations on. As far as I can tell, there's no way to turn those off in this game, so we're just going to have to deal with that. And we knock out the Nimble. Next comes out Tarantula. It also goes first. It uses Assurance, which actually does more damage if we go last. I go for Ember. We get that extra animation because it's our Terra type and that indicates more damage. We even get a critical hit, not that it mattered, and we knock out the Tarantula. Now the final Pokemon is Teddy Ursa, which isn't a bug type, but wouldn't you know, she is going to Terastalize it into a bug type. So I think it still maintains its same type attack bonus for normal, but defensively it is going to be considered a bug type, which is good for us. And it also is going to get same type attack bonus from bug moves, but hopefully that's not going to matter. So after all those animations play, Teddy Ursa misses with Fury Swipes. I again go for Ember. It doesn't quite knock out Teddy Ursa. That gives it one more opportunity to attack us, but thankfully, and yes, there is a lot of talking during these gym battles, Teddy Ursa goes for Fury Cutter. We knock it out with Ember, and that is one badge in the books. One out of 18 events, let's go. So in terms of what we're gonna do next, I looked at the map and I saw there was a grass type gym leader. It was fairly close, so I figured it would be at similar level. And I mean, we're fire type, so let's go do that. Now I should say before you challenge a gym leader in this game, you need to do a little test. So the first gym I had to roll an olive into a basket. This one, you gotta find some sunflora in the city. They're not really relevant for the purposes of a solo run, but thought I'd mention them in case you guys were curious. Anyways, after I finished finding all 10 Sunflora, it was time to battle the grass leader, Brassius, a mixture of Brutus and Cassius? I don't know. Anyway, we're of course going to Terastalize once again, and this time we have Incinerate. We outspeed the Petlil, 
and we knock it out. So that is one down pretty good. Next comes out the Smoliv, a new Pokemon, but it is also kind of slow and not very strong. And we're going to use a Terra Boosted Incinerate. And that is two down. Pretty good, right? Unfortunately, this is where the good times are going to come to an end. The final Pokemon is one that isn't actually a grass type, but looks like one. It is Pseudo Wudo. I guess now it's a Trudo Wudo. But yeah, it's going to Terastalize into the grass type, but it still has rock moves. We do have speed, and Incinerate does about 75% of its HP. And it looks like I got lucky. It went for its grass move, Trailblaze, which raises speed. And here's Rock Throw. And we lost. Oh, that's great. Now, normally I would just retry, but because the game is open world, I decided to go and try a different event. Maybe it would be easier. Right around Artisan, where the Grass Gym is located, there is the Team Star Fire Compound. So I tried to battle the trainer outside the gate. And it went quite poorly. While the Sudowoodo was roughly around my level, Houndour is level 25. And if the trainer outside the gate is level 25, I'd hate to see what the Pokemon are like inside the compound. So we have to try something else. So, at this point, I just decide to explore the world a bit more, and the one thing you can do to figure out where you should go next is just look at what level the wild Pokemon are. See this Phalanx? It's level 14. Right around these ruins is the Dark-type compound for Team Star. So the fact the Pokemon around are level 14 gives me a pretty good idea that this might be a compound my Fue Coco might have a better chance against. Sure enough, the trainer outside this compound uses a Murkrow, another Dark-type Pokemon, but this time, we can actually use our fire moves, and although the Murkrow outspeeds us, we are able to knock it out in just two incinerates, and finally make our way inside the compound. Now, once you're inside the compound, what you need to do is knock out 30 Pokémon using the Auto Battle feature, which doesn't give you any experience points, and is kind of weird to navigate for a solo run. You need to use at least three Pokémon, so I tried using really weak Pokémon, a Hoppip and a Magikarp. I mean, Magikarp doesn't even have attacking moves, right? But it, it doesn't quite work like that. I'm not sure how auto battles are calculated, but they seem unbelievably simplified. Magikarp knocked out a few Pokemon. Now, in the overworld, when you auto battle, your Pokemon can't actually be knocked out. They'll just not be able to fight anymore and return to you. Here, they can be knocked out. But I say that seems more of a theoretical possibility. Because even if you're insanely underleveled, not only was Fuecoco never knocked out, it wouldn't even lose HP a lot of the time. You can't really control how auto battles work, they're automatic. And you get 10 minutes, but I never needed longer than 2 or 3. Honestly, this just ended up being, like the gym tests before, a bit of busy work before you get to the real challenge. Now, I'm just going to call this guy Giacomo, which I'm sure is wrong, but you guys make fun of the way I pronounce Giovanni and Laura Lee anyway, so it's on brand. Anyway, Giacomo leads off with a Ponyard, and shockingly, it outspeeds me. I've got to Terastalize, but I still knock it out. And to my shock, the next Pokemon Giacomo sends out is the car he's standing on. Now, as it turns out, I think it's just the engine, and it's attached to the big car but it's still ridiculous that you fight a giant Mad Max-looking car, the Segan Starmobile. So I terastalize, and I decide to go for Incinerate, even though Disarming Voice is super effective. I think with the same type plus Terra bonus, we should do more damage. It outspeeds, goes for Metal Sound, that's fine. It's just going to lower my special defense. And now we need to see how much Incinerate does to the giant car. And... Yeah, it's not gonna work. Giant Car uses Snarl, which lowers my special attack. So, we actually are gonna do the same because when we're at 33% HP or lower, our fire moves are further increased due to the ability Blaze. I try to run away, but I'm just gonna have to lose this battle. It goes for Snarl, and we're gonna need to either level up or find something else to do. With that said, in traveling across the overworld trying to look for new things to do, I've leveled up enough that I think I can beat Brassius. 
We already know we're easily going to one-shot the first two of his Pokemon. The question becomes, will we one-shot Sudowoodo? Or heck, maybe we could even survive two of its attacks. Well, it's the moment of truth. I go for Incinerate. And I forgot Sudowoodo has Sturdy. So we did one-shot, but it didn't really help. It once again uses Trailblaze, but at only base 30 speed, the increase is not enough this time. That is two gym badges in the books, but we still haven't defeated any Team Star members or even attempted one of the Titan Pokemon. I try battling Giacomo now that I'm level 28, and I do have Flamethrower. I even try to get a Maximum Boosted, Terra Boosted, Flamethrower with Charcoal, in blaze range and it only does about 70 percent maybe less probably more like 65 percent i don't care that the game says this thing is at level 20 it is very tough for fue coco now i happen to be in the desert area and the big dawn fan was right around the corner i decided to try and battle it it didn't go well knock off which isn't even a ground move almost knocked me out and I wanted to see how much damage I would do. I didn't even do half. So this is clearly not the Pokemon we should be facing right now. We're still trying to find our way. Unfortunately, even though we have access to a lot of TMs, Fue Coco seems to have an extremely shallow move pool. Thankfully, you can get the power items to EV train really easily. And you can even buy mints to change your nature. We started with Timid Nature, which is pretty good. Plus speed, minus attack, we're using special attacks for the most part. Right now though, it just feels like we're in a really awkward position, where we're just not strong enough to defeat anything, and so leveling up usually is the only option, especially in a game where I just don't know if there are other items, TMs, or whatever available to me. Well, just like with Brassius, now that we've traveled a bunch, we're at a higher level, and we did finally defeat Giacomo. Nothing too exciting here, we were able to outspeed the Pawniard, and thankfully, now that we're at level 32, with a Terra boosted flamethrower, we are doing over half to the Rev of Room, and it didn't even attack me, just used Metal Sound twice, which I guess would have been nice. Whatever, not gonna complain, so that's 3 out of 18 events done, we're just 1 sixth of the way done, but hopefully this opens up a little more in terms of what we can do next. I was able to make some more progress in the fire type compound and battle Mila or Mela. Don't know what her name should be pronounced as. But regardless, I was able to take out her first Pokemon, her Torkoal, but her Rev of Room, which I guess they just act like terrestrialized Pokemon with the type they're supposed to be. So this one acts as a fire type. I wasn't able to do enough damage. I actually came kind of close, but not close enough. So I decided I would come back to this one a little bit later. In the meantime, I did some more exploring and I came upon the electric type gym led by Iono, the streamer trainer. It's kind of bizarre to see a streamer in a Pokemon game. Anyway, her Pokemon seem pretty underleveled. She leads with a Wattrell and we just terrestrialize, use flamethrower, and that Wattrell stood no chance in, well, you can insert the rhyme there. Next, we have a belly bolt, and it's got a big belly, but it's about to bolt back to its Pokeball because flamethrower absolutely annihilates it. That is two down. Finally, we get fire blast, which is gonna be super useful. So our moveset right now is Flamethrower. I'm going to delete Disarming Voice because it's only base 40 power. And I have Snarl and Hyper Voice. There aren't any more TMs I can really learn. And these seem to be the only special attacks. That kind of sucks. Anyway, Luxio comes out next. We're going to go for Flamethrower and it's a 1 hit KO. And now she sends out a Miss Magus or Miss Magius. Apparently that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. But... We're not going to have to worry about pronouncing it because it's not going to last very long. It does outspeed, Hex does some decent damage, but a Terrastalized Flamethrower, we're just too high level at this point. And this is what happens with Open World. Had I a set order, perhaps I could have done this at a much lower level, 
but in trying to get past the team star members, I leveled up a lot, and that just made Iono way too easy. That's okay. This has taken a pretty long time anyway to get through just three gym leaders and one team star. So we're now four out of 18 done. Are there any other trainers that will be fairly easy to defeat? Well, maybe instead of a trainer, we should go and fight one of the titans that we do have a good matchup against, Orthworm. I have no idea what level it is. Like I said, I knew nothing about this game going in. But as a Fire-type Pokemon, we're good both offensively and defensively, might as well give it a try. We have to chase it around, but eventually it will battle us. It misses with Iron Tail, we go for Flamethrower, and this thing has a giant boss-like HP meter, which we knock out in one go and then it runs away. Alright, that was anticlimactic. As it turns out, all these Titan Pokemon, you beat them once, they run away, they eat the magical sandwich ingredient. Seriously, Arvin tells you initially that your goal is to make the perfect sandwich. Quite an interesting quest in Pokemon. But as you would suspect, even though Orthworm is powered up, it's now a 2v1 battle. Arvin actually will help me out here. Not that he needed to, because Fire Blast one-shots the Orthworm, and we have finally defeated our first titan pokemon and as it turns out as you defeat the titan pokemon your legendary which you use to traverse the world gets one of its abilities restored beating orthworm lets you jump higher which should allow me to access a little bit more of the game so this is what i meant when i said the game is practically open world because you do lack certain abilities like swimming and climbing that we will get later as we defeat the titans who sometimes are very difficult like Donphan, or are quite easy like Orthworm. I guess it's going to really depend on our type matchup, and also their level, which I just don't know and I'm kind of having to guess. I then try taking on the poison type team star member, Atticus, but you'll notice it's raining. You see, sometimes in the overworld it randomly rains, and while if we had a Quaxly this would be quite good, with the Fuecoco, this means our fire moves are going to do much less damage, and this just kind of sucks. There's no way I can really deal with this, other than just waiting. But unsurprisingly, since I did try to do this in the rain, the Rev of Room is easily able to defeat me. I pretty much was already almost defeated by the Skunk Tank. These Pokemon seem pretty difficult anyway, so I think I'm going to try again later. But the key part of showing this battle was to illustrate how the rain in this game is annoying as heck and is something that would help us as a water type, but really hurts us as a fire type. Unfortunately, since pretty much every battle is outside in this game, it seems to be just another layer of randomness we're going to have to deal with moving forward. Anyway, I decide to explore around a bit and I fight another Titan. Bombardier? Bombardier? I fight the Sky Titan, and it goes pretty well. Even though I don't have a type advantage, my flamethrower instantly takes it into the second phase, and in the second phase, while it does outspeed, it does not do a lot of damage, and Fire Blast knocks it out. So, that is two Titans, one member of Team Star, and three gems. I think we might have officially found ourselves in a little bit of a groove here. Now, while you might think the Sky Titan gives the ability to fly, it actually gives you the ability to swim, which opens up a little bit more of the game. So, I explored around for another hour and ended up finding the normal type gym leader, Larry. You have to order a secret menu item to battle him. Kind of annoying, but battle him we will. He leads with Kamala, so I terastalize. I hit with Flamethrower, but unfortunately, even though I've leveled up a lot, I still don't one-shot, and the Kamala goes for Yawn. So I will actually knock out Kamala, but we're gonna go to sleep now. And now the Dunsparce. It looks a lot like just regular Dunsparce with an extra segment, but it's the evolved form of Dunsparce. I'm asleep, it goes for Drill Run, which doesn't quite knock me out, but then it goes for Hyper Drill, and yeah, that's not gonna work. Now, I did battle Larry a few more times, but it wasn't working at this level. 
Essentially, what would happen is that if Kamala didn't use Yawn, it could go for Slam, which did about half my HP. What's worse is the Dunsparce could go for Glare. Now, I could equip Cherry Berry and hope for Slam, and that would get me to Larry's final Pokemon, which I'm going to say is Staraptor. Unfortunately, what you're probably seeing right now is the cutscene that plays in the middle of the gym battle. Like, come on, do we need this? And this is unskippable. Even if you say skip cutscenes, because technically this isn't a cutscene, but like, really Game Freak, do we need this in the middle of a gym battle? I mean, I'm not even thinking about replaying this game. Just every time you lose having to rewatch this is very frustrating. Anyway, this is also when I figured out you couldn't shut off animations, but we're going to have to come back, unfortunately. We probably need to one-shot both Kamala and maybe then to Dunsparce. And then even if Staraptor outspeeds, which it does now, we'll have enough HP to knock it out with a flamethrower because it's special defense. It's pretty low. Well, I decide to battle Mila, Mela, the fire type team star member. It's been a long time. We're at a way higher level and thus partially due to Torkoal's drought ability, we're able to one shot it with flamethrower. I don't think the crit mattered. Torkoal has horrible special defense. The rev room uses screech and I go for flamethrower. I don't have charcoal and it's doing just under half. So fire blast would knock it out. It has speed boost, not that it matters. I go for Fire Blast, it goes for Blazing Torque, which obviously is not very effective. And once Mila stops talking, as long as we hit with Fire Blast, we win? Looks like we're gonna hit, and looks like we're gonna win. Now, I once again decide to do some exploring, and I made my way to Montenevera. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's in the snowy mountains, but it is the Ghost Gym City. Starting in Generation 6, you could get these items called Bottle Caps to train your Pokemon's IVs. Pokemon stats are made of three components. Base stats, which are determined by species, IVs, which are determined by the individual Pokemon, and EVs, which are determined by what you train against. EV training in this game is really easy because you get the power items early on and can just battle a whole bunch of wild Pokemon. IVs are usually fixed. However, if you hit level 100, you can use a bottle cap and do hyper training. In Scarlet and Violet, it seems, this has been lowered to level 50. And since bottle caps are just buyable at the Deli Bird stores, you actually can perfect all your IVs as soon as you hit level 50. Which means if we do these runs going forward, we don't have to worry about any luck components. We can choose our own nature and we can perfect our IVs and we can EV train. So we can get basically a perfect competitive Pokemon every single time. We're not quite at level 50 yet, but this is massive. And if I ever do more videos in this, the ability to hyper train at level 50 will be a massive reason why I do. Now, I may have explored a little bit too much because by the time I do another important battle against Atticus, remember him? We battled him in the rain. Well, it goes a little bit differently. I'm level 56 now. So even though Skunk Tank uses Sucker Punch, that's going to be one of the only attacks that's actually going to connect because we one-shot the Skunk Tank, then comes out a real Rev of Room, which is steel and poison. We knock it out with a flamethrower, obviously. Muck is the next Pokemon, and at level 56, we easily knock it out. And now the Starmobile comes to battle, this one poison type. It does outspeed and hit with Noxious Torque, but it's not really a big deal. Doesn't do nearly enough, so even a crit the next turn. We, on the other hand, do more than enough damage that it's going to be a 2 a KO. And after the second Noxious Tour hits, we have defeated our third of the five Team Star members, leaving only the Fighting Type member and the Fairy Type member, neither of whom we've even attempted yet, and both of whom look to be at the end of the game. After how easy that was, I decide to battle Larry again. After Terastalizing, Flamethrower does one-shot Kamala, which we talked about would need to happen. Next comes out to Dunsparce. This thing probably is pretty bulky, 
but I don't know if it's going to be bulky enough for Fire Blast. Unfortunately, we miss, and the Dunstars is able to paralyze us. We can see how much Drill Run is doing. It's doing about 50. We do hit with Fire Blast, and we knock it out, and we might still win, because even though the Star Raptor is going to Terastalize itself, we might be able to be in Blaze range and knock it out with a Flamethrower. It all comes down to this. Do we survive? It goes for Facade, and I'm paralyzed. Lovely. All right, we got to try that again. So at this point, I've been playing for a while, and I forget to Terastalize, which isn't going to matter versus Kamala, but it did matter versus Dedun Sparse because I also went for Flamethrower, meaning I could have gone for Flamethrower last time and we would have won. But don't worry, it's going to work out fine for me because although it's going to take a second hit and thankfully it went for Drill Run, the Staraptor comes out, it goes for its own Terastalized Facade, but we're able to knock it out using a Terastalized Flamethrower. And that is 9 of the 18 events. 4 Gym Badges, 3 Team Star, 2 Titans. What will be next to fall to Fuecoco? Well, before we talk about that, let's talk about terastalizing a little bit more. As it turns out, you can actually change your Terra type after you beat Larry. It's just really difficult to do so. You can get these shards when you do raid battles, which exist throughout the world. And the higher the level of raid battle, the more shards you get. You need 50 to change your Terra type. And level 4 raids only seem to give 3 or 4. And I don't think you get access to 5 or higher until the post game now you do get 50 normal shards for free and i'm actually going to change my terra type to normal which might seem bizarre but i actually think it's a really good idea because although normal isn't the best type for defensive purposes it only has one weakness fighting and it nullifies all of my weaknesses to rock water ground etc so I'll sacrifice a little bit of offense by not having my Terra type be fire, but I think we'll make up for it by having a much stronger defensive type, and I still do know Hyper Voice, which is pretty lucky. So I've decided to do that going forward, and that should make some of the remaining gyms a lot less scary. It should be noted, like Mega Evolving, once a Pokemon has Terastalized, it has done so for the entire battle, even if it switches out which we can't do, but I thought I'd mention that here. Now, we've defeated all the leaders we've attempted at least once, but there's one more Titan we tried and could not defeat, the Big Dawn fan. Now that we're much higher level, well, just watch. Yeah, we're doing pretty well. But as you did just see, Dawn fan is still doing a ton of damage to me, and I actually did lose once before this battle, but thankfully we got a little bit better luck the last attempt, I terastalized into the normal type. This time I chose not to. I didn't know Dawnfan had Stomping Tantrum, which is a ground type move. But in the end, it didn't matter. We are able to deal enough damage, and thankfully Dawnfan focuses on Arvin's Pokemon. And that is three Titans down. And you know what? How about a fourth? Because Cloth, as it turns out, should have been the first Titan we battled. I didn't know this, but yeah snarl one shots and once we face the second form it doesn't get all that more difficult in fact arvin's using like a low level shelter and the worst part of all this is that cloth allows you to dash so if i just would have battled yes it was rock type but if i just would have battled cloth first we could have moved throughout the world much faster so that sucks but what can you do Speaking of underleveled Pokemon, we're now going to battle Kofu, the water type gym leader. Now that we can terastalize into the normal type, he is a joke. His first Pokemon, Veluza, is only level 29. We're going to terastalize, use Hyper Voice, and that's one down. Next comes out Wug Trio, the water Dug Trio. We're going to use Hyper Voice, and unsurprisingly, it also one shots, two down. Finally, Kofu sends out Crabominable, which could be scary. It is an ice fighting type. Of course, it's going to terastalize into water type. I go for Hyper Voice, but it has pretty good defenses. It does not one shot. It goes for Rock Smash, but that's a base 40 attack. Not nearly strong enough. 
And that is the fifth gym badge. We're finally starting to find our stride and just take down these gym leaders one after another. So let's hope that continues. Remember, we did the hyper training here, but we never actually battled Rhyme, the ghost type gym leader. She requires double battles and we're just gonna use a Magikarp and Shadow Sneak from Binette is going to knock it out. We've Terastalized to normal type, so the ghost moves can't hit us. We use Snarl, which thankfully does half to Binette and knocks out Mimikyu's Disguise. On the next turn, Binette has to go for Sucker Punch because I don't know what else it uses to hit me, but it's a little too late, doesn't do enough damage. Snarl's gonna knock out Binette and lower Mimikyu's special attack, although it's probably a physical attacker. So that's one down. Next comes out Houndstone, which is kind of cute, honestly. What isn't cute is that the audience seems to be boosting stats, at least my stats. I'm sure it'll happen to the opponent. I remember something like this happening in Sword and Shield too. I hated it then, but it's not going to matter. Snarl does a lot of damage, but it doesn't knock out either Pokemon. And they do quite a bit to me after Slash and Play Rough. And then they get Ancient Power Boost, essentially, which isn't very good because now Mimikyu outspeeds and goes for Slash, but Houndstone is still slower than me. So I'm able to knock out both of them. And that means it's going to be 1v1. Or it would be if the audience wouldn't stop interfering. So I get another boost to all my stats. And Rhyme's final Pokemon is Toxtricity. Which makes sense because she's a rapper and it's kind of a musician type Pokemon. After it terastalizes into the Ghost type, I go for Snarl. Which is super useful because it goes for Discharge. A special attack. It does under half. But then it gets the Ancient Power Boost. Will it outspeed me? If it does, I believe it wins. Of course it wins after that boost. I outspeed. I win. A very silly battle, but a first try victory. Not bad, Fue Coco. All right, I decide to take on the Ice type gym next, but Nimona, who I've been battling throughout, decides to battle me here. And I'm just gonna spoil, I lose this one. And I really like that in this game, when you lose to Nimona, it just counts as a loss. You don't white out, you don't battle her again. She just takes the W, which she should, she won. Now we're gonna have to battle her again, and Lycanroc is gonna be really bad, because Normal and Fire are our main offensive moves, and both of those are resisted by Rock. Maybe I can Terastalize into Grass or Water at some point, but it's not looking very likely. I don't have many Shards, so for now, we're just going to take our loss and hope that the Ice type gym leader isn't as big a problem. Unfortunately, it was. Things start out well. She leads with Ice Volcarona. I mean, Frostmoth. I love Ice Volcarona. I think Frostmoth's a really cool Pokemon. My favorite from Gen 8. Anyway, it's double weak to fire and not a very good Pokemon competitively. The next Pokemon is Bear Tick from Generation 5. It doesn't do well against a flamethrower. But then comes out Cetitan, a new Pokemon and a really cool pun based on Cetacean, which is what the scientific for whales and dolphins are. Anyway, even though I am super effective, it may have thick fat or something because it survives. And even though I get a fluke burn, Liquidation still does over half my HP. Now, if someone is watching this in the future and they're like, J-Rose, why didn't you Terastalize? You keep your same type attack bonus from fire. I didn't know if that was true. I don't know if that's true. The game has just come out. The information just simply isn't there. So I will preface that perhaps there was an easier way around this. I do knock out the Titan, but the final Pokemon is Altaria, which is obviously going to Terastalize into the Ice type. Based on the damage it did, it probably doesn't affect your offensive typing, but whatever. Hurricane is a 70% accurate move. It hits. It knocks me out from half HP. So I decide this isn't worth it. Even with the favorable type matchup, we can battle Grusha later. There are plenty of other people to battle. Even though we're late in the game, there's still parts of the world I haven't explored yet. So I go and did that for about an hour and decided to battle Grusha again. Obviously, I've leveled up in the meantime. You know we're gonna one-shot Frostmoth, so that's not an issue. And you know we're gonna one-shot Beartick. So, let's just gloss over them and focus on the Titan. 
Obviously this time I know I should use Fire Blast, and I'm hoping I do enough to knock it out. I don't, however. However, we've leveled up to the point it's still, even without the burn, doing about half. I also think I hyper-trained my defense here. And it all comes down to Altaria, although I hyper-trained my speed too. So we might actually outspeed. And if we do, there's a solid chance we win. We do outspeed. We hit with Fire Blast. And it is a one-shot in spite of Altaria's excellent defenses. We are almost done. There is basically nothing left. We have the Psychic Gym, the Fighting and Fairy Team Star members, and the Dragon Titan. In spite of the fact we've used just a Fue Coco and have no information about this game, we're doing pretty well. Unfortunately, we do hit another road bump with the Fairy-type compound and Ortega. His first Pokémon is Azumarill, and Azumarill is really bad. We could Terastalize to Normal-type and use Hyper Voice, but the thing is, Fire actually resists Fairy-type attacks, so we'd get a short-term benefit, but a long-term negative. So, I think it might just be worth it to try Ortega again a little bit later. Or maybe we'll find Eviolite or something. Who knows? Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but we still have one gym leader left, Tulip, the Psychic-type gym leader. And I decided to go battle her because we're starting to get up there in level, and there's not that much more left to do. She leads off with a Farigaraf, a giraffe rig evolution that looks so cool. Well, unfortunately, while well, it looks cool, and I want to do a solo run with Giraffe Rig, but we knock it out with a single flamethrower, one down. Next comes out Gardevoir. I'm worried about its special defense, so I go for Fire Blast. And a little bit to my surprise, we one-shot. That's two down. Next comes out the Espathra. I think I'm pronouncing that properly. It looks like a cassowary, but anyway, it doesn't have really good special defense, or I'm just really overleveled. Flamethrower one-shot, so there's only one more Pokemon remaining. It's Florgis. I think that's how it's pronounced. I think it's a pun on gorgeous. Anyway, it terastalizes into the Psychic type. Florgis has very, very good special defense, kind of like Gardevoir. So, obviously, it survives. It goes for Psychic, but it only does 70. And so, we're going to be able to knock it out with a Flamethrower. And that means we have defeated the eight gyms of Paldia. We can go and take on the Pokemon League right now, but I had a feeling we would need to complete the other two storylines anyway. So might as well do those first, because I have a pretty strong feeling there will also be equivalent final tasks for those ones, like the Elite Four and the Champion for the gym storyline. I don't know that, but I have a pretty strong feeling that's what they're going to do. After looking for hours, I finally figure out how to get to the Fighting-type compound, and I battle Airy, the Fighting-type leader of Team Star. She leads with Toxicroak, which I think has Dry Skin, so Flamethrower is going to one-shot. That's one down. And this is the first time the game has asked me if I want to swap Pokémon. I think this is the first member of Team Star that had more than two. This is when I realized that there is no Shift or Set mode in this game. You just have shift mode on all the time and can choose to ignore it. Kind of lame. Speaking of lame, Passimian in this battle is kind of lame. It just shows up, gets flamethrowered, two down. Next comes out the Primeape Evolution Annihilate. An A plus pun right there. This time, flamethrower does not one shot, but Annihilate's close combat doesn't do as much as I thought it would. Not even half. So we're able to knock it out. There's only two Pokemon remaining. This also got me thinking that Evulate Primate might actually be a strategy, which is kind of neat. Well, the second to last Pokemon is Lucario, and Lucario is Steel-type. Unless it has Extreme Speed, which I don't think it gets normally, Flamethrower hits, knocks it out, and now, like always, we have to battle the Rev of Room, or really just the big car. We don't want to Terastalize, it's Fighting type, it goes for Shift Gear, I go for Flamethrower, and it does just under half. Stamina raises its defense, which isn't too big a deal. We're using Special Attacks, but there's High Horsepower, and oh my gosh, we just won. I went for Flamethrower thinking it couldn't really do much to me, 
But since we are below one third health, our fire moves are getting buffed another 50% and we are almost, almost done. One more member of Team Star, one more Titan, let's go. We did level up a little bit, so I tried to battle Ortega again, but it didn't go well. We do get past Azumarill this time, but barely. And I just want to skip ahead because we're going to battle the Dash Bun. And unbeknownst to me, its ability, when hit by a fire type move, the move does nothing and it sharply raises its defense. Which is a problem for me because we were using boosted fire types attack with Blaze and that was the only way we were going to win at around 30 HP. So if that's not going to work, we might need to come back a lot later. But before we do that, I want to try one last time with a different strategy. You can buy leftovers. We can terastalize into normal type right away. So we're going to do that. And you can see how much more Hyper Voice does now that we've terastalized. I mean, it makes sense, right? We are normal type and it gets the boost. So Azumarill uses Aqua Tail. It doesn't do nearly as much since we're no longer a fire type. And I can save on animation time by using Flamethrower to knock out Azumarill. We gain a little back with leftovers. I use Hyper Voice against Wigglytuff and much to my delight, it is a one shot. So we're gaining even more back via leftovers and we actually have a move to hit the dash bun. I don't know if it's gonna one shot. We go for Hyper Voice, it does. So all that's left between us and defeating Team Star is the final rev of room. Now this is just weird. It starts with Misty Terrain, and then its Steel Roller attack takes away that Misty Terrain. Don't get it, don't get it at all. Also, this is level 50, so clearly, Aerie was actually supposed to be the last member of Team Star. Anyway, I was hoping Hyper Voice would do half, but it doesn't. It only does just over a third. Then Rev of Room goes for Confuse Ray, which is annoying. It's only 25% chance to hit yourself in confusion, but are you kidding me? Why do you even have that? Well, we don't hit ourselves in confusion, and so, as long as nothing silly happens, we are going to win. Well, Rev of Room goes for Magical Torque. I don't know exactly what that does, but what I do know is hitting myself in confusion is really bad. We still do have a bit of a buffer, but that was annoying. It goes for magical torque again. We are still confused. And of course we hit ourselves in confusion. So I think this leftovers might be what saves us. It goes for magical torque. We survive on just 12 HP. We snap out of confusion and <laughs> oh gosh. That was a nail biter, but we have defeated Team Star, and there is just one more task the Dragon Type Titan. We just have to find it, we have to defeat it, and then move on to the end of the game. Now, finding this thing is really annoying. It's not just running around in the overworld like the other ones. No, 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 no. You've got to talk to this fish that says Titan. And then, this bigger fish eats it, and we are ready to finally battle. This took me an hour and a half to find. Don Dozo, the false dragon titan. It's actually water type. So we're going to terastalize into normal type. Hyper Voice does over half. We still have the leftovers equipped, and we're going to knock it out with a Hyper Voice. We then have to chase it down. Arvin shows up. You know how this goes. And we can somehow terastalize again, which is pretty cool. I didn't think we were able to. The game tells me you can only do it once before you heal at the Pokemon Center, so not really sure what's going on there. Anyway, we hit with Hyper Voice. It's doing about a third. The Dondozo uses Order Up and hits Greedent with it. Greedent uses Takedown, so that's now under half. If this happens again, it'll be a two-shot. So I'm going to go for the Hyper Voice again. It doesn't knock it out. Very close, Dondozo uses Aqua Tail. This time it hits me, but the Greedent knocks it out, and we've won. Right? Okay. 
I guess we haven't won. That's odd. So, the Tatsugiri, the real Titan? And we can terastalize now a third time? I'm not quite sure what's going on. Lots of things aren't making sense here. But, turns out that fish was the actual Titan, and it's much stronger. We do barely any damage with our Hyper Voice. Thankfully, the Icy Wind misses. Slowly but surely, we're going to whittle this down, especially if he uses Icy Wind. We get a pretty clutch critical hit. Icy Wind isn't doing very much, so we know we're going to win. The Greedent is helping. It goes first, but Hyper Voice is going to knock it out. And now, finally, for reals this time, we have knocked out the final Titan Pokemon. And as I predicted earlier, there are three different things we could do. We can go to the Elite Four, but I think I want to do that at the end in case the credits do roll when you beat the champion. You also need to battle the leader of Team Star, this mysterious leader who I always knew who it was because it was so obvious. I mean, you probably did too. It it's really obvious. And then you also need to battle Arvin. His mom is trapped in the center of Peldia and we need to go and rescue her. Now, I figured the battle against Arvin would be the easiest, and maybe it would be, but not for Fuecoco. So Arvin leads with a Greedent, and the thing is, Greedent knows Earthquake. So if you don't Terastalize, it deals a lot of damage. But the bigger issue is what comes after Greedent. After Greedent comes Garganical, which is a rock type. I don't know what its special defense is like, but it's good enough that it's going to be at least a 3 AKO with the moves I have now. It, on the other hand, has Stone Edge, which does over three quarters when I'm a fire type. So this is just not going to work right now. I try to battle some grass raid dens, which you can find on your map, and the four star raids are giving me about three to four shards, but if I were to get four shards that would mean I need to do at least 13 of these and there aren't even three or four on the map changing the clock seems to work in resetting them but you only get maybe two or three this would take hours so I kind of abandoned changing my Terra type we're just gonna have to stick with Terra normal for what I think will be the rest of the game now I battled Arvin again and I'm gonna spoil this one it went badly but I want to explain what I was trying to do here so I don't know what Fuecoco's total moveset is, but in this game, you can craft TMs. You craft them at Pokemon Centers, by the way, so it's pretty easy to find a crafting location. And you can see what Pokemon can learn which moves. And it's very, very clear that Fuecoco, while it might have better special attack, in a way, it has a better physical moveset. I say in a way because I could not find a TM for Flare Blitz. And without that, Fuecoco doesn't have a powerful fire move. Then again, with Terastalizing, you don't really need one. You can use Body Slam as your normal type move. And then it can learn moves like Thunder Fang, Seed Bomb, which is what I tried here. It can learn Dig, which while not a perfect move set, gives it a lot of coverage. And that would help us from having to rely on Hyper Voice and Flamethrower, which is pretty much all we've been using right now. For this battle, I think I changed my nature to Naughty, which is minus special attack plus attack. And I tried to invest some EVs in attack. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the EV reducing berries to do this perfectly. But I could tell it really wasn't making a huge difference. So I decided to reinvest those EVs in special attack and abandon the strategy. But I just wanted to explain that even in a run with very little information, I still didn't just want to level up if there were other options available to me. I did level up a little, but I decided rather than battling Arvin again, I would try to complete the other storyline and defeat the mysterious leader of Team Star. Before I did that, you have to battle Clavel, and he's kind of difficult. The biggest problem is that he leads with an Orin Guru that likes to use Yawn. And... How long I'm asleep really will determine whether this battle is a win or a loss. So we're at level 90 now. We use Flamethrower and we do about 70% to Oranguru, who like we talked about uses Yawn. We can knock out Oranguru, but that means we're going to fall asleep. And the next Pokemon is Houndoom that uses Dark Pulse. That also has a chance of flinching us if Houndoom goes first. This is why I had to get to level 90 
because now we outspeed Houndoom. Dark Pulse does about 80 damage, but I do have Leftovers Recovery, which is a strategy I plan on using going forward. Anyway, wake up on my second turn. I don't Terastalize and it does about 70 damage. Dark Pulse has taken me down to about 103 HP, but I'm going to get Lefty's Recovery, so it's more like 118. I'm able to knock out Houndoom as the rain starts in the overworld, which is awful because the next Pokemon is a Pultigeist, and I have to use Flamethrower in the rain. I can Terastalize to avoid a potential Ghost-type attack, and after Flamethrower hits, it almost knocks it out. Shadow Ball then cannot affect, look at that NPC walking in the background. Come on, like seriously, I, I just, I can't get over how bad that looks. Anyway, it goes for Sucker Punch, does next to nothing, we'll pretty much recover that with Leftovers, and we knock it out with Flamethrower. Now we get kind of lucky, I guess, just in terms of what's coming out next. A Bomb of Snow, it uses Snow Warning, so that gets rid of the rain. We would have knocked it out with Flamethrower anyway, but our fire moves are no longer going to be weakened, which is super great. Even better, the Pokemon coming out next is Amoongus, another Pokemon weak to fire moves, and there's only one Pokemon left for Clavel, the Water-type starter. I believe it's pronounced Quackquavel. Clavel terastalizes it, obviously, into the Water-type. I go for Seed Bomb since I still know it, but it doesn't do that much damage. Just under half. It goes for Brick Break and nearly knocks me out, but I'm pretty sure Hyper Voice will knock it out. I go for it, and it does knock out the Quaquavel. And we have beaten Clavel, who in fact is not the leader of Team Star. Spoiler alert. The real leader we need to battle next. Spoiler again, it's Penny. We encounter her at the beginning of the game, and she shows up throughout to give us items. It was very clear she was the leader of Team Star after all. And she battles us with a team of six Eeveelutions. Espeon and Glaceon don't make the cut, but the rest of them are going to be battled, which is not good for me because Vaporeon would be very bad for a Fire-type Pokemon, so we probably need to Terastalize. Penny leads with one of my favorites, Umbreon. Actually, I like all the Eeveelutions, to be honest. It goes for Baby Doll Eyes, which is like Growl, but with priority. I didn't actually know it had priority, so that's kind of cool. We hit with Flamethrower, and because it used Baby Doll Eyes, we're actually going to knock out Umbreon without taking any damage, which is pretty cool. Next, Penny sends out Vaporeon. We're going to Terastalize to normal to avoid the Hydro Pump knocking us out. We're going to use Hyper Voice, but it's going to obviously be a 2 hit KO. Unfortunately, even though Hydro Pump has a decent chance of missing, it doesn't, and it still does a lot of damage to us. A second Hyper Voice does knock out Vaporeon, but we have still lost a good chunk of our HP. Now comes out Flareon. Ordinarily, we would resist Flare Blitz, but obviously we won't. Hyper Voice doesn't knock it out. It goes for Flare Blitz, and it does a lot of damage to us. Like, we're gonna knock out the Flareon, but I have a very bad feeling we can't win this. Jolteon is a very fast Pokemon, and at level 62, it does outspeed, hits with Thunder, and we're gonna need to figure out a different strategy or something, because this isn't gonna work. So I do come up with a new wrinkle to the strategy, and it works pretty well. We're gonna just speed through this battle. I'm gonna Terastalize right at the beginning, not that it really matters. Everything is still a 2 a KO, but now we're gonna be using Protect every turn we can, giving us just a little bit of leftovers recovery. This is going to really add up and will allow us to make it farther in the battle, unfortunately not far enough. So this time around, Flareon comes out next, because since we're a normal type, Vaporeon is no longer strong. And at least for Vaporeon and Jolteon, potentially there's a chance for a miss, and it looks like we're going to need a miss, at least one. Because as I speed through this battle, what's going to eventually happen is after we knock out the three Kanto Eeveelutions and Umbreon, then comes out the Sinnoh Eeveelution, Leafeon. Thankfully, we're super effective. But then comes out Sylveon that has excellent special defense and really good special attack. And so even though we've managed to maintain 115 HP, it isn't enough to survive a Terastalized Moonblast 
And so we either need to stay as Fire Fue Coco the whole time or maybe level up a little bit more because I don't see another way to do this. So now I'm at level 94 and at this level things change a little bit. First off, it seems like a 50-50 chance Umbreon will use Baby Doll Eyes, and due to Leftover's recovery, it actually doesn't matter too much if it uses Baby Doll Eyes, it just saves us a little bit of time. So that's kind of nice. You notice I don't Terastalize right away, I just prefer Vaporeon to come out first because it has a chance to miss, and since this is taking me a long time, I can potentially reset quicker if I don't get a Hydro Pump miss, assuming we need one. So, we do Terastalize, it's still going to be a 2 hit KO. Crits are only 1 in 24, so not very likely. We don't get the Hydro Pump miss, but we do knock out the Vaporeon. Of course, I am skipping past the turns where I use Protect. We are still using that strategy. It's slow and tedious, but it is very effective. So, before Flareon attacks, I have 227 HP, nearly full. Obviously, I'm going to go for Hyper Voice. My fire moves would just get absorbed. And Flareon goes for Flare Blitz. If it gets a burn, which has happened, that's a reset because it'll nullify my Leftover's recovery. The same thing goes if Jolteon gets a Thunder Paralysis. Now, at this level, there is a slight possibility that's kind of bad, which does happen here, that Flareon can knock itself out with Flare Blitz, just because I have a little bit more HP and I deal a little bit more damage. I would like the extra turn of Leftover's Recovery, but I don't get it, and hopefully it's going to be enough, but it might not. Obviously, I use Protect against Jolteon, so I have 159 HP. Jolteon outspeeds, so it gets two opportunities. I need at least one Thunder Miss, and we get it the first time around. That's good. A little above average luck, because the chance it hits with two Thunders at 70 accuracy isn't actually that great. We don't get a critical hit, which would have been exceptional. There's also the very slim possibility that Thunder misses twice, but we don't get that either. And we knock out Jolteon with a Flamethrower. We're going to be just over 100 HP heading to Leafeon. And of course, like always, we'll use Protect. Then we're going to knock it out with Flamethrower. And hopefully, after using Protect against Sylveon, we have just enough to survive a Moonblast. So we have 153 HP. I think that's going to be enough. We use Hyper Voice. We don't get the crit. It uses Moonblast. It doesn't knock us out. So this took me about an hour. Don't forget, since I'm playing at single speed, these attempts take way, way longer. Animations are on. So it's not fun to do these again and again and again. But we have completed the first of the three storylines. Team Star was the first to fall. Now all I need to do is defeat Arvin and then take on the Elite Foreign Champion and then I think I'm done? I don't know. We'll see what happens. I've never played this before. Now that we've leveled up and have committed to using leftover protect strats, I think we have a pretty solid shot of defeating Arvin. I terastalize right away to normal type, use Hyper Voice and one shot the Greedent. So that's really good. Next comes out the Garganical. I use a Terastalized Hyper Voice, it's doing about a third. It goes for Body Press, which deals about 100 damage. That's not too terrible, especially when you consider we're going to get two Leftovers Recovery. If we could get a critical hit, that would be exceptional, but I don't think we can. Unsurprisingly, the second Hyper Voice does not knock it out, but Body Press leaves me at 97 HP before Leftovers Recovery. So when we finally knock out the Garganical with another Hyper Voice, we're going to be at over half HP. But it gets better. The next Pokemon is a Toadscrool. Basically, a Paldean Tentacruel. It is weak to fire moves. I'm not actually sure what type it is. I think it's Grass type. But whatever type it is, it's weak to my fire moves, so I'm going to go for Flamethrower. And now we have even more HP. Next comes out the Scovillain. And I actually forget to use Protect, so I go straight for Hyper Voice. Hopefully, it's not too big a deal. Cloyster comes out next. I just decide, you know what? I've been playing this game for far too long. Let's go for Hyper Voice. Cloyster has horrible special defense. We knock it out. I mean, we have a ton of HP, 
So even though Mabostiff looks kind of scary, I think we should be fine. It has Intimidate, which doesn't matter because we're using special attacks. It terastalizes into the Dark type. We're going to use Hyper Voice. It nearly knocks it out. Mabostiff uses Crunch. And this is the moment of truth. Does a ton of damage, but we have 99 HP to spare. We're actually going to recover even more with Leftovers. And we can finally knock out Arvin with a Flamethrower. And that completes the second of the three stories. Yes, after we defeat Arvin, it's clear that the final task we need is to go to the center of Paldia, but we need a team to accompany us. It's very clear that team involves him, Penny, and Nimona, who is likely waiting for us to defeat the Elite Four and the champion, so might as well go and do that right now. We're at a very high level, but typically the Elite Four is pretty challenging for a first form Pokemon, so I'm not anticipating this being a cakewalk by any means. After completing a very tedious and unnecessary interview segment, we are introduced to the first Elite Four member, Rika. I have no idea what type they use, but I just have to go in battle, so let's go. The first Pokemon Rika sends out is Whiskash, so I don't know if it's going to be a water type battle or a ground type battle. No matter what, Terastalizing to normal type makes sense, so I do that. Hyper Voice does an insane amount of damage, but does not knock out Whiskash that uses Muddy Water. It does decent damage to me and thankfully doesn't lower my accuracy, and I'm able to knock out Whiskash the next turn, so that's one down. Next comes out Camera Up, confirming this is a ground type battle. I go for Hyper Voice, and this time it does one shot, so that's two down. We might be a little over leveled. Next comes out Dawn Fan. We might not one shot because of Sturdy. It uses Earthquake, but doesn't do all that much to me. I could use Protect, but I'm just going to use Flamethrower. Knock it out. Only two Pokemon remaining. The last one will obviously Terastalize. Doug Trio is next. We don't outspeed, and it goes for Sandstorm. Flamethrower does hit. Doug Trio has horrible HP and special defense, so we knock it out. And now out comes the final Pokemon. What's it going to be? A Claude Sire. Never seen this Pokemon before. No idea what its stats are, but we're just going to go for Hyper Voice. Obviously, it terastalizes it into the ground type. First time we've seen a ground terastalization. Looks really cool. Claude Sire survives on half HP or just under that, but it uses Toxic. I can anticipate it's probably going to use Protect here, because that would make the most sense. The AI seems to be pretty smart, and as I suspected, it does, but it's too little too late. Even with Sandstorm nullifying my leftovers, even with Toxic racking up damage, the fact of the matter is, with just 5 Pokemon, and at level 94, Fue Coco just couldn't be stopped, and we have a first try victory. So far, of the four finale battles that we've had, this one has been the easiest, which is a little disappointing, but there are three more members of the Elite Four to go. Maybe they'll be a lot tougher. Unfortunately, though, I don't think that's very likely based on who we're about to face next. And no, I'm not talking about Elite Four member Poppy's appearance, but rather the fact she specializes in Steel-type Pokemon. We're probably just going to outspeed and one-shot everything. So the Kuparaja comes out first, we use Flamethrower, one down. Next comes out Bronzong. This could have a fire resisting ability or could have Levitate. I'm going to go for Flamethrower, and based on the damage it did, it probably has Levitate. So that's two down. Corviknight comes out next. It's slow, it has bad special defense and has pressure, not sturdy. So that's going to be three down. Now, Magnezone actually could have Sturdy. I love the way it's reflective. I think that looks really cool. And it indeed does have Sturdy. So I am going to actually be attacked, which is cool. Or not. Magnezone uses Light Screen, which while problematic, it faints. So there's only one Pokemon remaining. And it'll likely be a two-shot. That's not a big deal. And so for Rika's final Pokemon, she sends out a Tinkaton, 
Not sure what its type is other than steel, and it doesn't really matter because it's going to terastalize into a pure steel type anyway. I decide to go for Fire Blast. Thankfully, we hit. The animation looks amazing, by the way. Tinkaton gets burnt. And yeah, this battle is over. It goes for Stone Edge. So even if it didn't get burnt, we would have won. It would need to have gotten a critical hit. I still think we win because critical hits only do 50% more damage. So GG. We also got two burns with our fire moves. That's exceptionally unlikely. Hopefully that luck doesn't suddenly reverse later in the game. Foreshadowing. Anyway, next Elite Four member is Larry. Yeah, he serves double duty as an Elite Four member and a gym leader because he was just so cool the last time. Larry also uses a different team. He is a flying type member. So he leads with Tropius. Tropius is of course weak to flamethrower. We outspeed, we one shot. Next comes out Star Raptor. I don't know if it's the same Star Raptor, but it's a Star Raptor nonetheless. We outspeed though this time, we one shot, and that's two down. Next comes out Oracorio, the electric form. We outspeed, we one shot. We won't though outspeed and one shot Altaria. We're gonna outspeed. I'm not gonna terastalize just yet because we can't undo that. Thankfully, Hyper Voice does about half. It's gonna be a 2 KO. Dragon Pulse hits. I could go for Protect here, but we're doing so well. We're just gonna knock out Altaria and face Larry's final Pokemon. We're already there, and it's a Flamigo, which I think is part fighting type. Anyway, I accidentally misclick and go for Hyper Voice. It's gonna Terrastalize into Pure Flying. We don't. And Hyper Voice, even though it's not same type, we're not Terastalized, it nearly knocks it out. Flamigo goes for a Terastalized Brave Bird, does quite a lot of damage to me, but not nearly enough. Second time definitely wasn't the charm, Larry. We've defeated you quite easily once again. Actually, the first time wasn't even that easy. So he kind of got worse, although relatively speaking, we're at a higher level. Doesn't matter. Three first try victories against the Elite Four doesn't bode necessarily well for this game being super tough. If you remember, Bidoof and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl was way, way more difficult, and we were even at a higher level. There is still one more Elite Four member to go, and I'm not sure what type it's going to be. I've seen a pattern here that they're using the types of the Titans. So there's two options for Hassle. He can either be the rock type member, which would be terrible, or more likely he'll be the dragon type. And looking at his tie, clearly he has a dragon type theme going on. Not a good type to face, but much better than rock. So we're going to try and get four straight victories. And is there even a champion? Is Nimona the champion? I don't know exactly how it's going to work. Let's find out. But we have to beat Hassel first. So Hassel leads with Noivern, and it goes for Super Fang, which is terrible. I'm at half HP right as the battle begins, and it even outsped me. Hyper Voice hopefully is going to one shot. Thankfully, it does. We get a little bit of Lefty's recovery, but this battle looks far more like the challenge we were hoping for. Next comes out Dragalge, that has pretty good special defense. We do outspeed. But as I expected, Hyper Voice doesn't one-shot. It also has adaptability, so when it uses Sludge Bomb, it deals a ton of damage. I probably should have used Protect there. We're only at 68 HP to face the final three Pokemon. Well, no, that's not true. We're going to gain leftovers, and in fact, I should use Protect before knocking out Dragalge. So in reality, once we do knock it out, we're going to be at 116 HP, as Hassel sends out Flapple. I'm going to play it safe and use Protect to start, and I don't know how strong Flapple is. I didn't play a ton of Generation 8. I'm going to go for Hyper Voice because even though Fire does normal damage, I think Hyper Voice does more, and it did enough to knock it out. So there are only two Pokemon remaining. Next comes out Haxorus. I'm going to use Protect once again. And it does not have great special defense. There is a solid chance Hyper Voice one-shots. Hopefully it does. 
And now we have quite a bit of HP. And you can see just how powerful leftovers are. You can buy them so early and combining them with protect, you can gain way more HP than you might think. For a weak Pokemon like a Fuecoco, this is huge. The final Pokemon Hassel sends out is a Baxcalibur. I haven't seen one of these things yet. I have no idea what they even evolve from. It's probably Steel Dragon, but it's going to Terrastalize anyway. And I'm normal type, so it wouldn't even matter. I'm going to go for Protect. Just gain a little more HP back. I nearly have 200 HP by the time I use Hyper Voice. Hopefully this does decent damage. It does just over half. But now Baxcalibur counters with Glaive Rush? Is that how you- Whoa! I don't know how you pronounce it, but that did a ton of damage. Holy moly, Protect really, really mattered. I can't believe how much that did. Thankfully, it didn't outspeed. And thankfully, we two-shot. And we have first try victoried every single member of the Elite Four. Even at level 94, there are other games where that definitely doesn't happen with a first form Pokemon. So I'm pretty confident in saying they are definitely a little bit easier than in other games. But when you consider the fact that Arvin and Penny also are pretty tough battles, I guess I understand why. There is still a champion we need to face. Her name is Gita, and in Paldia, she is known as Top Champion. Everyone who defeats her is just a regular champion. Hopefully, I will be one of them, and can we make it 5 for 5? That'd be pretty funny. Let's see. Well, she leads with the Cassowary Espathra. We know it's Psychic type, it's probably Psychic Flying, and we also know it doesn't do well when hit by Flamethrower. So I don't Terastalize, I go for Flamethrower, and I one-shot. That's good. Next comes out Avalug, the absolute perfect Pokemon to face. It's slow. I believe Sturdy is its hidden ability, and it has horrible special defense. So as long as it doesn't actually have Sturdy, which it doesn't, that's two down with just two Flamethrowers. We still haven't had to Terastalize yet. That's a really good thing, because we can do this strategically to trick our opponent to use a ghost move. Well, next she's sending out King Gambit, which I can already tell is going to be an evolution for Bisharp. It looks really darn cool. Unfortunately, it's not going to stick around very long. Doesn't look like a fast Pokemon. Maybe it'll use Sucker Punch. It doesn't. So, this is going pretty well. Finally, a Pokemon that could give us some trouble, Veluza, a Water-type Pokemon. But, we can just Terastalize, and even if we don't one-shot, which got away for this animation, we do one-shot! So never mind! Don't know what move it was gonna use? I know there's only two Pokemon left. And that's soon to be one Pokemon left. Holy moly! There are three Pokemon weak to fire on this team. That's not great for Gita, but she does have a Pokemon that can Terastalize itself. Maybe that Pokemon is going to be next to impossible. What's that Pokemon? It's a Glimora. Never heard of this. No idea what type it is, but it's Terastalizing. And that building with stone pillars indicates it is now a rock-type Pokemon. The worst possible type, but it makes sense. Every single other type has got one terastalization so far. Unfortunately, I thought it was a grass-type and didn't anticipate it terastalizing into rock. So I go for Flamethrower, which does next to nothing. It goes for Sludge Wave, which does decent damage and also gets the 10% chance to poison. So remember how I said I hoped our luck would continue? Yeah, it's not continuing right now. I think we're gonna lose. I don't think it matters whether I'm gonna use Hyper Voice or Flamethrower. It's gonna take two more hits to knock this out. So I'm just gonna save time and use Flamethrower because the animation is shorter. Protect is no longer an option because we're poisoned, which does 1 8th versus 1 16th recovery. And uh-oh. It's going to use Terra Blast, a move that changes its type to match the Pokemon's Terra type, and also is either physical or special depending on whatever is stronger, like Photon Geyser. I think we just lost. 
Oh. But wait, I think the poison's gonna knock me out. If it doesn't, it's because we had leftovers. <laughs> no way! Four HP! Let's go! Five battles, five victories. I'll take it. That battle went kind of off the rails. We got some horrible luck. Sludge Wave, 10%. Sludge Bomb is 30%, by the way. So, Gita pulled out all the stops, but we are still champion. However, I don't see credits. So, we gotta do some more stuff. First, it seems we have to battle our rival, Nimona. We have battled her a few times already. She proved pretty tough when we were at the ice gym. So hopefully this goes okay. Well, it seems like Nimona should be champion because that Lycan Rock looks a heck of a lot scarier than any of Gita's Pokemon. I'm gonna have to Terastalize right away into normal type and go for Hyper Voice. Thankfully, as this game was made in 2022, Nimona, even though in universe she's been watching my games, doesn't know my very obvious strategy goes for Drill Run, which is not same type, it's a ground move, which does very little. Hyper Voice, meanwhile, does half damage. And of course, considering this might be one of the final battles, I'm gonna go for Protect here. There is no reason to play this recklessly. We know Lycanroc is gonna outspeed. It goes for Stone Edge. Hopefully it doesn't... I was gonna say hopefully it doesn't crit, but it missed. All right, that was really good luck. Man, looks like Luck is back on our side. That's one Pokemon down, probably her scariest Pokemon. Next comes out Pomot or Pamo, if it's French. It goes for Ice Punch. Doesn't do very much and thankfully doesn't freeze. I play it safe and go for Hyper Voice, and it does one shot, so that's two down. Next, she sends out our old pal Orthworm. Remember that Titan Orthworm? This is gonna be just about as difficult we're going to outspeed, we're going to use Flamethrower, and we're going to knock out Orthworm. Maybe could have used Protect first, but if we outspeed and want to KO the next Pokemon, we will be at full HP. That Pokemon is a Dunsparce. This probably will survive a Hyper Voice. It does. Hopefully it doesn't go for Glare here. It goes for Coil. A truly useless move, and that means we are going to be at full HP. The battle is almost over. I think we're gonna go six for six. Man, this game was actually pretty difficult up to this point. A little disappointing, but who knows? Maybe there's another battle after this. Well, hold on. The next Pokemon is Gudra, a Pokemon known for its exceptional special defense. I'm gonna use Hyper Voice but I don't think it even did half HP. This might be our first three hit KO in a very long time. Gudra also has pretty good offensive stats and Dragon Pulse deals about a third of my HP, more actually, right off the bat. So that's pretty scary. I'm scared enough that I'm going to use Protect because I don't know what the last Pokemon is and I might need all the HP I can get. With 204 HP, Hopefully this knocks out Gudra. It does not. Gudra uses another powerful Dragon Pulse, and when it's all said and done, we're going to be at just around half HP by the time the final Pokemon attacks us. Hopefully it's not a fighting Pokemon. That would be really bad. Oh wait, I know what it is. It's the Grass Cat thing. It's Sprigatito, the final form. Wait a minute, we got this. All right, it's called Meow's Karata. And it's going to terastalize into grass, but it's probably not going to do all that much damage. Although, we are normal type now. We should be fine, right? Especially if we outspeed. So, okay, it does outspeed. Flower trick. Wow! Are you critical? I, okay. <laughs> that, that was unexpected. Um, I keep forgetting I'm not a fire type still, but thankfully with blaze and super effective Even with the critical hit we still did win as it turns out once again Using protect and leftovers 100% won us the battle. We would never have had enough HP otherwise and It seems like the game still isn't over. We have to go to the center of Paldia I didn't know if that was post game it isn't, 
And to be quite honest, this entire section plays like a giant cutscene. You kind of have some gameplay segments. So I'm just going to summarize what happens here. It depends on whether you're playing Scarlet or Violet, but major story spoilers here. The Professor invented a time machine, and now there's either future or past Pokemon running around. We've already seen one of them, the weird looking Dawn fan we battled, but now there are more of them, including a past Jigglypuff. It's a neat concept to be honest, it just takes a long time. Finally, once you're done the walking simulator, you get to the very bottom of the crater. And to make a long story short, you've got to destroy the time machine because it's causing problems. But the professor, Arvin's mom, she actually, what's the YouTube friendly way of saying this? Got sent to the shadow realm years ago and the person you're battling is just an AI with her memories that is programmed to defend the time machine and is gonna battle you with past versions of Pokemon we already know. And this battle is one of the toughest I've ever done, ever. I I'm just gonna say that right off the bat. This battle was impossibly difficult. She leads with Ancient Volcarona, otherwise known in this game as Slitherwing. It is not a bug fire, but rather a bug fighting. Doesn't matter, Flamethrower will knock it out. The next Pokemon is Ancient Amoongus, known as Brute Bonnet. Believe it is Grass Dark type? It is still Grass type though, and it is still slow. So we knock it out. Two down. The third Pokemon though is Ancient Magneton, and its name is Sandy Shocks. Now I should have figured out by that name, it is a ground type, but I didn't. Flamethrower deals a decent amount of damage, and it burns, but a same type boosted earth power still hurts a lot considering it isn't affected by burn and yeah we probably lost here so i can try to use protect strats to gain a little bit more hp back but that is a huge blow early in the battle we do knock out the sandy shocks and we make it to fluttermane ancient mischievous so I'm just going to go for Protect, see what it's going to do. And this was good because it went for Power Gem, a rock type move. So I Terastalize into the normal type to avoid super effective damage. It goes for Power Gem and it still does over half my remaining HP. Flamethrower is now boosted by Blaze, but it still doesn't knock out the Flutter Main. I can use Protect to gain myself a little bit more HP. Maybe just see one final Pokemon. It uses Thunderbolt. I just, just make it. So I'm able to see what's coming up next. And it turns out it is the ancient Jigglypuff known as Screamtail. Now this Pokemon uses Zen Headbutt. The bigger problem is that it actually outsped me and we have only made it through the first four Pokemon. Most of them are two KOs. This isn't looking good. Now, I'm sure some of you are asking, but what happens if you Terastalize against the Sandy Shocks? And I'll tell you, things go a little bit better. When you lose this battle, you're just taken outside the room where this whole interaction occurs, and you need to watch like a one minute cutscene, even if you have cutscenes disabled, which is really, really annoying. Speaking of annoying, I terastalized to avoid the Earth Power, so if Fire Blast would have been more powerful if I didn't, maybe that's on me, but it doesn't quite knock out the Sandy Shocks. If it did, then we could get through the first three Pokemon without taking any damage. That would be super, super helpful. Instead, we get hit by Earth Power. Even though it's not super effective, it still does a whole bunch of damage, and it's not the last Pokemon that's going to be able to damage me. From now on, Pokemon are actually going to outspeed me. Which this can as well. I'm going to tell you I've battled these many times. And they have items. The Sandy Shock has a Quick Claw. Because I modify my stats using berries and mints. And I just outspeed seemingly randomly. The only explanation is that I'm actually faster. 
but it's using Quick Law, which activates 20% of the time. So that's annoying. Screamtail, however, just normally outspeeds me. And I don't know if it's part fighting type, but it does know Drain Punch, which is super effective. We get pretty lucky that we burn because now Drain Punch is going to do less damage and it's going to lose a bunch of HP to burn, meaning that it's going to be knocked out in two hits. Now comes out the Mischievous. Sorry, I go back and forth calling them by their new names or just the ancient versions of the Pokemon I know. Now, if you're already Terrastalized, it just goes for Thunderbolt two times, and that does do more damage, and there's a chance to paralyze. I probably should have used Protect, but as you're about to figure out, it doesn't matter. For the first time, I make it to Roaring Moon, the Salamence. And I have 98 HP. I want to see if I outspeed. The answer, no. The damage, more than 98, which is not good. We're also pretty close to level 100. In fact, in the battle you're seeing now, we're going to hit level 100, and I'm going to save after. And I'm going to explain to you why this battle took me over five hours. Part of it is the cutscene, but the other part is that it's just really hard. So I kind of figured out a consistent way through the first three Pokemon. Flamethrow for the first two, you've already seen that. Against the Magneton, once you're at level 100, even with leftovers, if we're not Terrastalized, I don't know if that matters. It does matter for the next thing, so don't Terrastalize. You have a 15% chance to miss. If you miss, or if it gets Quick Claw, it's a reset. Otherwise, you one-shot every single time, which is cool. Next will come out the Mischievous. So we want to not Terrastalize because we need every hit point we can get. So it's going to go for Power Gem, which also cannot get a Paralysis effect. And then it's going to go for Thunderbolt. We're always going to two-shot with Flamethrower. If we could get a critical hit, it would be really nice. I didn't get a single critical hit. Not in five hours. I mean, I did. For like the second hit, which didn't matter. I didn't get one useful critical hit, which is good. So I can explain these battles really thoroughly. After you knock out the Mischievous, you move on to Jigglypuff. As you can see, we have to use Protect and Leftover strats. We need every single hit point. And Jigglypuff, for whatever reason, stopped reliably being a 2 KO at some point. Um, it's kind of confusing because I kept messing with my stats and I must have accidentally lowered my special attack. But during this battle, it still was a 2 KO. That's also part of why it took so long because I didn't realize what was going on and this needs to be a 2 hit KO. Having a move that restores its HP is really annoying. But more annoying still is that my plan for beating the Salamence doesn't seem to work in Gen 9. You see, I would have just enough HP to survive two Dragon Claws if I could use Protect back to back. Now, I tried this against low level wild Pokemon. As far as I can tell, Protect will always fail back to back, kind of like Destiny Bond. And that took my chance from winning from 50% to, uh-oh, what the heck do I do? Now, let me make this very clear. I have used bottle caps on all my stats, and I've tried to max out speed with Tim and Nature, so plus speed and special attack. I don't have much investment, although I do have some, in both defense and HP. And so, roughly, Dragon Claw does between 100 to 118. That's a huge range, but it does give me an idea of how much HP I need in order to win. Still, trying to have that much HP was easier said than done. There was no way I was going to outspeed the Jigglypuff or Mischievous. If I knew their exact stats, maybe. I also could teach Fairy Voice, which is only 40 base power, because the Salamence is Dragon Dark type. But I didn't think it was worth giving up on Flamethrower, which is 100% accurate, and every time I lose, I have to watch the cutscene. Now, you might be wondering if I was just trying to get a critical hit, and I definitely was trying to, but I was also changing my stats. I have all the stat-reducing berries. In the lake, you can get the wings, which give one EV in any stat you want, 
So I was able to really get in there and try to create the perfect stat layout for Fue Coco. It was just a ton of trial and error. I tried using Throat Spray, an item from Gen 8 that boosts your special attack when you use a voice move like Hyper Voice. Unfortunately, I wouldn't have enough HP. So all I could do is keep making adjustments and keep battling. I got so sick of watching that same cutscene over and over and over again. I could always make it through the first two Pokemon. Imagine if they were more difficult. And note that in Violet version, these are completely different Pokemon. Maybe it would be even easier for Fuecoco, but I haven't played Violet and don't know what they are. There was always a chance we could lose to the Magneton. If it ever hit us, Fire Blast always knocked out, but if it missed or if Quick Claw activated, it was a reset. Now, against Fluttermane, you might be wondering, would you have enough special attack to maybe knock it out with Fire Blast in one hit? The problem is, I just couldn't figure out exactly how much speed I needed to outspeed the Magneton. I did try using a Modest Mint, and I got outsped every single time. So maybe there was a possibility for Fire Blast one-shotting the Mischievous, but I simply could not figure out what the correct stats were. Without having information, it is very much just guess and check, and when each mistake costs five minutes, it's a frustrating process. Thankfully, Thunderbolt never paralyzed me a single time, the only luck I got. So unless it got a critical hit, I would always make it to the Jigglypuff. Unfortunately, here is where the run stalled because as I mentioned, I just couldn't get the guaranteed to a KO. And the frustrating thing is even though I'd have more HP than before, it still wasn't enough to take two Dragon Claws from Salamence. I would hope in vain that I might get a clutch critical hit and I could finally start working on this video, but alas, the game would not let me. But after tinkering with my stats, I was able to make a bit of a breakthrough. It wasn't though against Jigglypuff necessarily, but actually against the Mischievous. What did I do? Well, I figured out that all the investment in defense was kind of worthless, and I really needed to double down on special attack. If I focused on it enough, I actually could, I also lowered speed a little bit, just enough to outspeed the Sandy Shocks. So not only is Sandy Shocks a guaranteed 1-A-KO with Fire Blast, but Mischievous is a potential 1-A-KO with Fire Blast. Now in this battle, we don't get the 1-A-KO, but we get the 1 in 10 chance for a burn, which actually ended up being even better. We got the lowest roll possible, I think. And so not even after the burn damage was Mischievous knocked out, However, I got a free turn to set up Protect and gain just a little bit more back via Leftovers, and then the burn damage did take it out. So I probably saved myself around 60 HP, which should be enough to tank the final two Drain Punches and the Dragon Claws, but there's only one way to find out. With the increased special attack, Drain Punch doesn't seem to be doing that much more, even though I lowered my defense a bit but I'm doing way more, guaranteeing that 2 a KO once again. And so after I knock out the Screamtail, I have 194 HP. After one more Protect, that is 212. The most I think this could do with two max rolls, based on what I've seen, is 236. So this is going to be unbelievably close. It goes for Dragon Claw and gets a huge high roll, 115, so we may have just lost. I go for Hyper Voice, of course I can't get that clutch crit. Like I said, no clutch crits, but we gain some leftovers back, so we're gonna be at 115. And you know what? I actually think we're gonna be fine. I did the math wrong in my head. We're gonna use Protect again. That's gonna put me all the way up to 130 HP. Like I said, the highest I've seen is 118. I think that's the most it can do. And so, as long as it doesn't crit, we win. 
One more attack. Finally. Oh my goodness. This took me almost as long, actually longer than all the Elite Four and the major battles. Oh my. This was quite a saga. I will tell you that the game continues for a little bit. There is pretty much a pseudo scripted battle with your legendary Pokemon taking on another of its kind. I believe you can lose, but you can't use your starter. So from the perspective of a solo run, the game is over. After that pseudo scripted battle, the credits do in fact roll. There is a post game, but this video has been way too long. I apologize, but it is a new game. I had a lot to say, and I also have a lot more videos to make. Thank you guys for watching. Like, sub, show that support. I'm going to be back with new videos on all the different Pokemon games, and I got to go make them. Take care.